Please be seated. Um, the court is now back in session. For this afternoon session, as scheduled in our timetable, we will hear the testimony of an expert, that is TCE 12. Court officer, could you invite the expert into the courtroom? I notice the defense counsel Victor Coupe on his feet. You may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Your Honors. Um, just for the record um, and some guidance from the bench, we requested the, the senior trial officer yesterday via email whether it would be possible to have more time for our cross-examination allocated. Um, of course, um, the amount of time depends on the answers of the expert uh, to questions of the civil parties and the, and the prosecution. <laughs> Uh, however, we feel taking into consideration especially what the, this expert has uh, testified in case one that um, uh, quite sweeping statements might come from this uh, particular expert. So uh, the allocated time as of now, which is uh, 20 minutes or half hour, something like that, might be uh, insufficient. So um, if I may suggest, let, let's see how things go um, uh, with uh, the expert, but I would like to have noted that we did file yesterday for an extension of our allotted time of cross-examination. President, thank you, Councillor Coupe, and the International Lead Co Lawyer for Civil Parties. You may proceed. I would like to make a brief remark or two. This expert testified in case number one. I find that it is out of place to say that this expert could make inappropriate statements. We should make this clear up front and stop putting words in the expert's mouth. I think this is completely out of place and improper. President, thank you. The prosecution, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and good afternoon, judges. Indeed, yesterday, the defense of Nunchia made a request regarding the time allotted to the different parties for the examination of the expert. That email was sent by Mrs. Katerina on, uh, on behalf of the civil parties. She stated that that request was belated since it comes just on the eve of the examination of the expert. This witness testified in 2009. It is completely improper to ask the chamber to amend the schedule today. If the chamber is of the view that that request can be considered favorably, we would request that the chamber should give the prosecutors the same allowance of time. We think that this request is late and it should not be entertained. Thank you, Mr. President.
President, after having heard the request by the Defense Council for Noon as, well, as, well as the other relevant uh, parties, the Chamber will discuss the issue, and that is based on the nature of the questions put to the experts by the prosecution and the lead co-lawyers, and the time will be considered in due course. Court officer, please invite the expert into the courtroom. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Expert. Is your name Chum Sotire? Answer, Mr. President, your honors. Yes, my name is Chum Sotire. Thank you, Mr. Chum Sotire. And how old are you? Answer, I am 45 years old. Question, where is your current address and occupation? Answer, currently I live at number 2, Oknya Van Street, Phnom Penh Thamai, San Sok District, and I work as a medical expert and also the executive director of TPO. Thank you. As reported by the graduate this morning, to your best knowledge, you are not connected by blood or by law through any of the civil parties in this case, nor through any of the two accused, namely Nunchi and Kiyosampon. Is this correct? Answer, yes, it is. Thank you. Also, as reported by the Grafji, you already took an oath before your appearance. Is this correct? Answer, yes, it is. Thank you. We would like to inform the parties to the proceeding that for the hearing of the testimony of this expert, the floor will be given through the lead co-lawyers for the civil parties first before any other party and the time allocation is 1 hour 40 minutes. You may proceed. Big on. Good afternoon, Mr. President, your honors, and good afternoon, everyone in and around the courtroom, and good afternoon, Mr. Expert. I have some questions for you, and upon my conclusion, Ms. Elizabeth Simenoford will take the floor for the civil parties regarding your expertise. To start with, can you tell the court about your qualification in your expert area? 
answer. Thank you, Mr. Co-Counsel. I studied medicine at the Medical University, and I concluded it in 1992. And in 1994, I continued my expertise in the field of psychology at the Oslo University at, in Norway. And I concluded my study in 1998. Later on, from two, 1999 to 2000, I continued my master's degree at the University of New South Wales in Australia and I obtained my master's degree in 2000. Currently, I am undertaking my PhD degree in psychiatry at Monash University in Australia, and I am now in my final year. Thank you. Question. I'd like to briefly ask you about the history of your employment. Can you tell the chamber? In particular, your employment in dealing with the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime. So first, your general employment, and secondly, your employment in dealing with the Khmer Rouge victims. Answer. In the psychological area, I've been working for almost 19 years. So I am considered one of the 10 experts in Cambodia after the Khmer Rouge regime. I started working with uh, the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime directly and in particular the victims of S21 since uh, 2005 or 2006 and six up to the present time. Question. Besides the victims of S21, have you worked with other victims in the psychological area, that is, in relation to the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime? Answer. My organization has been working with the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime and we worked with several of them. So they were the victims of torture, of sexual rape, and myself and my TPO also provide treatment to other victims of patients who were victims and who were tortured or who were traumatized due to the result of the regime. Question. Do you or your organization work with the civil parties in case 002? Answer, yes, we do. We worked with civil parties in both case 001 and 002. Question. In relation to the general victims of the Khmer Rouge regime, can you tell us the result of your work with them? What were the impacts that they suffered under the Khmer Rouge regime? Answer. 
I can say that the majority of the victims that we have worked with or that we provide the psychological uh, expertise through were traumatized from the outer appearance and without close consultation with them, it seems that they are normal. However, upon deeper consultation with them, researching and consulting with them about their backgrounds, their living conditions under the Khmer Rouge regimes and their relatives, we learned that they were seriously traumatized under the regime. And due to their difficult living condition, it seems from the outside that they were not traumatized as uh, they can continue working and earning their living. But uh, as I said, the majority of them were traumatized. <coughs> Question. Can you tell the court the symptoms indicating that they were traumatized? But, um, Answer. Of course, we have our methods for determining whether a person is uh, traumatized. For instance, in our area, we have a measure to, to test and to indicate uh, the level of uh, trauma, namely that a, a person has uh, nightmares and the mental reaction can be a kind of a PTSD. or the depression, or anxiety, or the paranoia. And that resulted from uh, serious uh, torture and sufferings uh, inflicted upon them. And the, the constant symptom was the, the vivid imagination of uh, what happened. And when there is any symptom, which is a, there is an event which is similar to those uh, events, that would trigger their feeling. And at some time, they would have a nightmare about being uh, chased, about being uh, killed, or about the relatives that were uh, killed, or that they lived uh, through the difficult period or that they themselves uh, were tortured in uh, different forms. And some of them in that dream were being put in a cage. And that is the indication of a trauma. And that could in fact reflect uh, the, what they suffered under the Khmer Rouge regime. Question, you indicate the four symptoms, the PTSD, trauma, and the other two symptoms, and I am not a, an expert, so I cannot recall the exact terms you use. Can you indicate to us the details of each of the four symptoms that uh, you stated? Answer. Let uh, me give you an example of uh, PTSD and uh, trauma. PTSD is one of the symptoms that a lot of experts uh, claims infected upon a lot of uh, victims in uh, Cambodia. Usually, in regards to PTSD, the, the victim would recall the events that happened uh, to them, and they, they, 
it seems that the event uh, is taking place uh, vividly in front of their eyes either during the daytime or at night time through a nightmare. And the second important uh, symptom of PTSD is the avoidance. That is, they do not want to talk about uh, what happened or go through the location where they were mistreated or to talk about any events that uh, would trigger the events that happened to them in the past. And the third main symptom, which is related to their bodies or physical appearance, usually during the nightmare, they would find it difficult to breathe. They would have a tremble in the chest or the body would uh, tremble just upon uh, a small sound or noise and that they uh, cannot sleep and they have a uh, strength in their muscles. All these symptoms indicate to PTSD. And I actually conducted a research because PTSD is a symptom and actually uh, this is determined by the Western experts in the medical field. But uh, for our country, uh, there are some uh, ex distinctions due to our cultural differences. Let me give you an example. Our people, they are kind of uh, not outgoing people, and they, they don't want to speak about uh, any trauma, and they are lacking in the decision makings because of all the impacts that they suffered under the regime. And of course, uh, Cambodian people under the, the Khmer Rouge regime uh, used to hear the, uh, one of the uh, values phrase that is to grow a cotton, uh, a kapok tree that is to, to remain quiet or to keep a silent. So for them, they don't want to do anything or to speak about it. And for that reason, they lack of their personal communication with other people. And these are in addition to the symptoms determined in the PTSD by the Western experts. Also, we notice the, the anxiety in them, the hopelessness due to the great loss uh, under the Khmer Rouge regime. For example, the loss of their houses after they were evacuated from the city or from the village, and the loss of their relatives upon returning to the village and they were not there. So sometimes they, they would consider of uh, committing suicide uh, because of all these factors. Question. Can't you elaborate a little bit further on the symptoms of a paranoia? Answer. This is the least kind of the symptoms that uh, we found. Some of the victims, and uh, due to being tortured, up, upon the allegation that they were spies, uh, for example, and as it was compounded, the way they torture, they, they received in the detention center, they were scared. And they always have suspicions that they were being monitored or followed, or that a spy is uh, monitoring or is tracking him or her down. Question. After those victims experience the traumatic events under the regime and what they have experienced up to today, are they still being traumatized by those events that happened during that regime? 
answer. I don't really quite get your question. Could you please re clarify it? Question. You stated that the victims of the Khmer Rouge regime were traumatized. Since they were first uh, traumatized and uh, regarding their current situation at the time, does your study indicate any changes to their mental status? For example, is the symptom, uh, is the trauma symptom now uh, reduced or is it uh, the same? But, uh, Thank you for uh, the clarification on your question. Well, if the, they, they uh, have not received any uh, treatment or they have not been uh, counseled, then this uh, symptom remains with them. It uh, would not uh, reduce. Generally, uh, these people uh, in the uh, course of everyday activity, uh, they uh, operate like an um, average person. But if uh, there is any event uh, that triggers uh, the uh, previous traumatic experience they uh, have gone through, then uh, uh, they would be in a situation which we can recognize. But if they uh, receive uh, treatment, uh, then uh, they, will, they tend to get better. But the treatment takes a uh, rather long time, and I believe that uh, they need not only the uh, psychological counseling, but also the uh, legal uh, support, as well as the livelihood restoration uh, and other programs as well in order to reintegrate them into the uh, mainstream uh, living condition. Question. I would like to uh, look at the uh, situation or condition of the civil party in K002. Normally, the uh, civil party and victims have expressed uh, their traumatic experience. And uh, do you observe that uh, those who are in K002 uh, had the same traumatic experience as those uh, you had worked with before? But, um, The President, uh, Mr. Expert, please hold on. Mr. Kope, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I object to this question. I am not sure if uh, this expert knows what these civil parties have testified, what they have said, if, even if they are known by this expert, whether they have been uh, in, uh, investigated by him, examined by him. So this expert cannot possibly say anything relevant about um, the suffering of uh, the civil parties who have been appearing here this week and, and, and last week, only if uh, they are his patients. Otherwise, he cannot say anything sensibly. So, uh, yeah. Council Pichang, with uh, your permission, Mr. President, I believe that the expert is um, a professional uh, person who have uh, undertaken study, uh, particularly on those uh, who have gone through traumatic experience uh, during the Khmer Rouge uh, period. And of course, the uh, victims and the uh, civil party in K002 were the uh, victims of this uh, uh, experience and as a um, a professional uh, in the field uh, with expertise, I believe that he has provided uh, counseling uh, not only to his client in general, but also the civil parties in K002. I believe that the questions uh, put uh, to this uh, witness now is, is appropriate. And uh, in addition, Mr. Chem Sutira is an, an expert uh, in the field. He has the expertise to assess the impact uh, on the um, uh, mental health status uh, of the uh, of the uh, civil party. I would like to seek uh, leave from Mr. President to allow him to respond. The President, Mr. Prosecutor, you may proceed. Merci, Monsieur. 
Thank you, President. Earlier on, I noted that the expert stated that not only had he worked with the civil parties who had been admitted into case two, but he had also worked with the civil parties admitted into case two. This question is entirely justified because he has stated very clearly that he has worked with civil parties. He has not identified which ones, but he should be in a position to uh, speak on the results of his work with the civil parties. If, if I may quickly reply, Mr. President, this is sensitive medical information, and at least we would like to know if there's a waiver of these uh, civil parties. I'm not quite sure if we are, uh, if we should be discussing the medical history of the civil parties who have been testifying. President, I hand over the floor to Judge uh, Silver Card Wright uh, to uh, settle the objection uh, posed by the Defense Counsel for Mr. Nguyen Chir concerning the last question posed by the lead co lawyer for the, uh, for the Civil Party. Judge, please. Yes, thank you, President. Uh, the lead co lawyers uh, should put to the expert um, some of the uh, experiences of trauma that the civil parties have described 
in the courtroom and ask his expert opinion on them. This means that the objection is upheld because the expert, uh, you, you have not established whether the expert knows what uh, specific trauma or symptoms of trauma that the civil parties have described in court. And he certainly cannot refer to his own knowledge at a therapeutic um, level of any individual civil party. So you will have to describe and ask him if in his expert opinion this is a symptom of the trauma that he has been describing or not. Now you don't need to go exhaustively through what the civil parties have done, but just a few examples might, uh, might be of assistance. Uh, have I made that clear enough for you? Thank you, Your Honor, for uh, making this uh, point uh, clear for me. As a matter of fact, um, my colleague, Madame uh, Simono, Simono Fort, uh, will uh, dwell on this uh, issue in a specific uh, manner. That's why uh, I uh, raise uh, this point now as a, in, in a broad uh, term. But with your in instruction, I would like to uh, move to a more specific point. Mr. Expert, have you assessed or uh, followed the uh, testimony of the uh, civil party who have been summoned to the court uh, to testify uh, here concerning their traumatic experience uh, as well as their um, uh, suffering. Uh, have you followed uh, this line of testimony? Uh, response. I uh, did not uh, follow uh, this um, testimony because over the last couple of weeks uh, I was on my uh, trip uh, overseas. However, uh, I uh, actually have um, uh, consulted uh, some uh, civil parties in case uh, 002 as well. For example, uh, one lady who was uh, tortured, uh, to be more specific, he was raped, raped uh, during the Khmer Rouge uh, period. She was raped and then uh, she was uh, tortured uh, as well. And her traumatic experience was so painful and she uh, has uh, hidden it uh, with herself. Uh, she has never shared uh, this uh, painful experience with anyone and that make it even more painful for her. So it make it very difficult for her when she speak out. Uh, she needs support, psychological support with people around her when uh, she uh, speak it out. She try to recall that painful experience. So she received the uh, counseling from us before uh, she uh, chose avoidance as her coping uh, uh, strategy. Um, she became despaired uh, for her future. She was uh, hopeless, and she had uh, nightmares of what had happened uh, in her life. Uh, she tried to avoid uh, everyone. Uh, she lived in fear, and uh, whenever she encountered something or any event uh, similar to what she had encountered, she was terrified. For example, people wearing in black, people talking loud, for instance. 
uh, counsel, uh, thank you, Mr. Expert, but I, I will I will dwell on each and individual case of the civil party uh, uh, later on. But for now, um, I can bring up the experience of two civil party. Uh, one is Mr. Jindum Duol, and the other was the uh, experience of uh, Madame uh, Saint Sivata. Uh, both of them were the victims uh, during the uh, regime. Uh, they were both evacuated uh, out of Phnom Penh, and along the way, they encounter a lot of barbaric activities along the road. Uh, she was forced to leave uh, Phnom Penh. Um, they were expelled from their house and they were evicted from the place where they stayed uh, when they went along the ways. And the um, situation that she encountered along the way, for example, stepping on the corpses, or she had to walk um, nonstop, and she had pains, uh, all the pains all over her legs, and uh, other uh, difficulties that they endured. Actually, I cannot... Uh, uh, enumerate all the difficulties they encounter in details. But at that time, um, both of them were around uh, 9 or 11 years of age. I would like to ask for your expert opinion uh, concerning the impacts uh, on them uh, at this age. Uh, what, what would be the uh, impacts uh, on these uh, children and whether or not uh, these impacts were far-reaching for them in their later life? The President, Mr. Expert, please hold on. Mr. Kope, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I object to this question. Um, it might be different if the, civil, if the uh, lead co-lawyer would describe uh, the trauma um, uh, experienced by uh, the, uh, the particular civil party, and then might ask the question uh, whether this trauma fits in his general practice or in his ideas as an expert. But to just state uh, whatever um, the victim or the civil party has overcome, uh, that can impossibly lead to uh, uh, an expert answer of this expert. Because, um, as we have seen all, uh, reports show that maybe 10 or 14 percent of the people suffer uh, from post-traumatic stress uh, syndrome, and the rest uh, of the people who suffered uh, do not have these uh, effects. So. I think the uh, lead co-lawyer should describe the trauma and then ask if this, is a, uh, if this fits in a general uh, pattern uh, and not describe whatever the, uh, the specific civil party uh, has uh, endured. Uh, Hearing uh, what Mr. Coupe has just said, uh, it is something that I am doing now, the President. The objection and the grounds for objection by the defense team for Mr. Nguyen Chir are uh, founded and most appropriate. Therefore, the expert uh, is instructed not to respond to the last question posed by the lead co lawyer for the civil party. And counsel, please uh, try to rephrase uh, your question uh, for the expert. We wish to remind you that this expert uh, was not uh, in the uh, public gallery or he was not following the uh, testimony as well as the statement of uh, suffering of the previous civil parties that the chamber has summoned uh, them uh, to testify uh, before the chamber in the last uh, few weeks or this, uh, this week. So you should uh, take this factor into consideration. Otherwise, uh, you may run the risk of uh, losing the times that you uh, should have uh, saved to ask uh, the expert. Council Pinyang. Based on your uh, study on the uh, symptoms uh, so of the uh, victims, 
I would like you to enlighten the court about uh, the uh, psychological impacts on the uh, children. Response. Thank you. In the evacuation, particularly the evacuation from uh, their uh, familiar residence, uh, of course uh, they would be um, affected uh, regardless of uh, whether or not they are old or young. So this uh, was a traumatic experience as well. And of course, uh, n uh, as uh, children, they do not have a sufficient coping uh, strategy uh, with this traumatic experience. Because uh, when they are very young, uh, they had to uh, stay far away from the place that they are familiar, uh, then this uh, experience was even more traumatic. Because normally when they stay in a place, they uh, have some attachment uh, to the place and the people uh, over there. So when they are evacuated, uh, they are detached uh, from that attachment. So they lose the opportunity to uh, interact or to uh, socialize uh, with uh, others. When they are evacuated to a different place, an unknown location, they have to encounter a lot of difficulties over there. For example, they do not have proper shelter. They uh, had to work uh, very hard uh, over there. And uh, when they uh, became sick, uh, they did not receive proper uh, treatments. So these are the uh, psychological impact uh, that children um, would uh, have. And as for children, uh, th through this traumatic experience, uh, they lose their future vision. In other words, their uh, vision for the future may be tarnished, uh, unlike uh, people who are mature enough to think of uh, what uh, will happen to them in the future. Once again, uh, to be more specific, uh, children may be may lose the sense of uh, growth uh, for the future. And in the future, uh, the psychological impacts might be um, far-reaching. For example, children might uh, suffer from PTSD, or they have a behavioral problem, for example. And they also have, uh, they, they may have the antisocial behavior. May, they may become uh, uh, aggressive, and they may become sadist, for example. Uh, at the times, they are uh, they they were uh, young, they were, uh, but now they are uh, parents uh, in the family. So if they have sustained this traumatic experience and they have uh, psychological problems when they were young, they were. Um, put in the uh, child unit and they were subject to tortures and hard labors or so. So when they are raising their children, probably they uh, tend to um, uh, raise their children in a more hostile uh, manner. This may be the consequence for uh, uh, the, their children. Council, how about uh, children who came often, they lost their parents and relatives. Do you think that their uh, psych psychological uh, status uh, would be uh, the same as those uh, children you have just described? Response. Generally, uh, the traumatic experience uh, is quite similar from one person to another. But for children who lost their parents, it's even more severe uh, because upon uh, the return of uh, when the Khmer Rouge regime was uh, over, they did not have anyone to rely on. Uh, they did not have the social support. Uh, those who receive uh, social uh, support during the Khmer Rouge period or after the Khmer Rouge period, normally their uh, psychological status uh, is better, better than uh, those who did not have the uh, family and social support. Uh, so, of course, in general, they are affected uh, by the traumatic uh, event, uh, but uh, the condition is more severe than those uh, who uh, have their uh, family support. 
Council. I raise uh, this issue because there is one civil party. I would like to know whether or not uh, this particular civil party has a feeling that uh, he feel different from others, that he was an orphan from a very young age, and he looked at everyone's, they had their parents. And can you um, withdraw the, um, or can you enlighten the court as to what, the like, what is the likely behavior of, of the person of this kind? But, uh, Response. Of course, these uh, people tend to uh, regret about things in life and they uh, resent uh, very easily for uh, they feel they have resentment uh, of everything that happens in their life. And normally these people may suffer from a uh, psychological problem which is uh, normally uh, known as uh, grief. Uh, this person uh, is behaving like a grief-stricken person who uh, lost um, his uh, loved one. And recently, um, uh, a, the uh, Center Against uh, Genocidal uh, Crimes in Berlin, uh, they conducted study uh, on over 700 uh, people. Uh, they suffer from grief. Uh, normally, they uh, they are very resentful because they uh, have lost their parents. They are resentful because they have not received sufficient support uh, from the um, societal organizations and people around them. Council, I uh, have only two more questions before I uh, hand over to my esteemed colleagues. Um, for those who had been evacuated and then resided uh, in the countryside and their children uh, died one after another uh, by various reasons, uh, whether it be disease or uh, killing. So I would like to know the um, the psychological impact of a mother as a consequence of this uh, traumatic event. Response. As I said earlier, concerning the loss, uh, people who lost the loved ones uh, may have a much more uh, severe traumatic experience. They, in addition to losing the property and belongings they had, uh, they also lost uh, their loved ones. These have uh, a very severe uh, psychological um, uh, impact uh, because they lost uh, their loved ones. Uh, then this person uh, tend to become very lonely and he or she becomes uh, despaired, and uh, he or she uh, do not want to achieve anything uh, in life uh, because uh, they still have sentiment for uh, the uh, loved ones uh, who uh, was gone. So this uh, traumatic experience remains uh, with uh, the uh, victims. Council, my last question for you. For the uh, people who were um, forcibly evacuated out of the city, when they arrived uh, in the base um, uh, in the countryside, they uh, were discriminated against. Treatment against them was uh, completely different uh, from the base people, um, and they were forced uh, to uh, work extremely hard uh, over there. So I would like to um, know the uh, psychological impacts to the victims of this kind. Response. As far as the psychological uh, impact is concerned, uh, during the Khmer Rouge period, uh, virtually everyone was affected by uh, this. Uh, at that time, there was a segregation between new people and old people. This was um, 
a circumstance that uh, the new people uh, were living in fear uh, because they uh, had a feeling that they were uh, classified as new people and they were the target uh, of uh, surveillance. Uh, they were prone to attack. They were prone to allegation uh, by others and implication by others as well. So they uh, had the uh, sense of losing their identity and they were uh, the people who were subject to surveillance and implication and they were also subject to being killed as well. So they uh, lost uh, their identity and losing one's identity is uh, a very severe uh, traumatic experience because uh, these people were uh, considered uh, de detached uh, from the mainstream society that they do not enjoy enjoy uh, what uh, they should uh, have in society. Uh, just, Council, just a uh, follow-up uh, to this. Uh, is this your uh, observation or it is your uh, guesstimation of that uh, concerning these impacts? As uh, it is based on the experience, and uh, personally, I also lived through the regime and I was also considered as a new person, and that's the feeling that I have had, and I believe the rest uh, would feel the same. Council, Mr. President, I conclude my question session now, and I would like to hand the floor to my international colleague. Thank you, Mr. President. President, yes, you may proceed, International Council. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Expert. I will put a few questions to you, relying on your professional practice and experience with victims, not only with civil parties, but with victims as well. Victims of uh, Khmer Rouge, you've been able to meet as patients. As a follow-up question, I would like to revisit a term you and my colleague used, and the term is Baxbat. Can you tell us a bit more about that term? Thank you for your question. The word in Khmer, which pronounces Baxbat, that is in literally means a broken uh, carriage. In the dictionary of uh, some that song Chun it describes that it defines that the word Basbat is the word coming from uh, two separate words that is the breaking part and the other part is the physical aspect. So it's the the physical breakage and that definition also refers to the psych psychological uh, impact of a person that it means the psych psychologically that person is damaged or broken However, the word Baxbad in the scientific sense, it, it is more extensive than that. It refers to the suffering received by the Cambodian people through the regime. Thank you. You've answered the next question I had for you since you relate this syndrome to victims, victims of the Khmer Rouge regime. May I now go a bit more into detail regarding follow-up? You had stated that some victims do not wish to talk about events they endured under the Khmer Rouge regime. Did you meet victims who told you they didn't wish to talk about the crimes to their children? And if yes, 
Why did they not want to talk to you about them? Thank you for your questions. More often than not, victims, the trauma victims, would possess one of the symptoms that is the, the avoidance that they don't want to talk about what happened in the past or what they endured. Because by recalling the event, uh, they would feel the pain. So by being avoidant, the person would be in a better status. And for that reason, they decline to touch upon the issue. I'd like to also to add that Cambodian people, that is the majority of them, seems to fall into this avoidance uh, symptom more than the other people in the world, that is uh, the post-war or traumatic experience. So my general observation is that the Cambodian people avoid talking about the Khmer Rouge uh, regime, even within the family circle. And as for the victims, if I do not ask them, they would not uh, tell me about that. They find it difficult to, to, to tell me. And even if when I asked the person, the person would take uh, some time to recollect uh, himself or herself before he or she would uh, tell me about the experience. Thank you. At a deeper level, do you know whether some victims did not want to talk particularly about the experiences to their children, and did they tell you why it was impossible for them to talk to them about those experiences? The fact that they don't want to describe the situation to their children is that due to the traumatic experience, they try not to describe the situation or the event. And in Cambodia, it seems there is a collective voice for them and not to let them speak about it. And that happened uh, throughout the country. In general, we can observe that uh, a lot of Cambodian people do not want to talk about that. And uh, secondly, they may feel that they are not ready or to tell them as they feel that the children, their children are not ready to hear about those events as they might have an impact upon the children or that the children may not understand the, the events. And for that reason, they avoid uh, retelling the story to their children. Merci. Thank you. Still on this topic of parents who didn't want to talk about their experiences, did you meet uh, persons who t told you how they met the perpetrators of acts of violence and um, how they did not want to meet those persons who committed those acts of violence? Uh, no, I have uh, not met a victim who meets with a perpetrator. However, I met uh, a number of the victims who do not want to speak about that uh, due to the, the symptoms that I talked about and due to fear. Merci. Thank you. I would like to talk about the specific topic of children who lived during the Khmer Rouge regime. 
we heard testimonies of a number of persons, and we also read the statements of certain civil parties, as well as applications. Did you mean patients who are victims of the Khmer Rouge and who had been children during that era, and who told you that they denounced persons, they denounced their parents, or who told you the Khmer Rouge asked them to denounce their parents. Yes, I made a number of these kind of uh, patients, in particular those who received uh, the uh, service from our TPO organization. They were the children during the Khmer Rouge regime, and now they are parents of uh, their children. And as I stated earlier, regarding the broken uh, carriage of bus, but when they experienced the uh, traumatized experience, they lost uh, their carriage. However, after receiving the, the treatment uh, from our organization, they uh, feel better, they relieve the fear that they have held to it, and that they became more confident and that they, they, they gained their hope. Initially, they refused <coughs> to take our uh, service offer, but uh, later on, they feel that it's it's uh, a benefit for them and that uh, they could actually stand uh, before the events or could even come to testify before the court. Merci. Thank you. I would like to talk about disorders with specific regard to children, perhaps your professional experience would enable you to say something on that subject. Did you meet children from the Khmer Rouge era who told you that the very fact that they were under the authorities of Anka instead of being under the authority of their children? And if yes, what did they tell you? in that regard. President, uh, expert, please wait. Uh, the Defense Council for Nguyen Chi, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I've been listening uh, for a while to the questions of the lead co-lawyer. Um, and to be honest, although it's not my allotted time, so maybe I shouldn't object, but I really have no idea what the relevance of these questions are. Either the questions are directed to the expert witness in his capacity as a treating psychiatrist or psycho psychologist, and he could say something in general about uh, the patients that he is treating, or uh, he is uh, asked questions as an expert, uh, for instance, in respect of uh, the article that he wrote, co-wrote in the Journal of Affective Disorders. Now we have just questions about uh, him meeting people who may be victims or not. We have no idea about representat uh, representativity. So uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to listen to this, to, to, to the testimony, but it's completely irrelevant. If I may respond, Mr. President, I am surprised at this objection. I believe that an expert appeared before this chamber to testify not only to what he wrote, but also to his or her professional practice and experience. This expert is here because he has met with a number of the victims of the Khmer Rouge, and I believe he's entirely capable, based on his professional practice, to testify, and it is more important than his writings, and none of those writings are in the tribunal interface today.
President, I'd like to give the floor to Judge Lavage to clarify on the objection raised by the International Council for Nunchi on the last question put to the expert by the International Political Lawyer. You may proceed, Judge Lavage. Oui, merci. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Regarding the question of the civil party lead co lawyer, the chamber would like the lead co lawyer to be more specific in the questions she puts to the experts with a view to assessing the impact on victims. And it is um, the Noon Chia's Defense Council will definitely have the opportunity to put specific questions to the expert if they so wish in order to assess the relevance of the testimony of this expert. Thank you, Your Honor. I will try to comply with the Chamber's instructions, but I'm relying on all what has already been decided before this Chamber. We have heard persons before this Chamber who explained that, you have, that parents were separated from their children or children were separated from parents by Anka. Did you receive any patients who are victims of the Khmer Rouge and who told you that they were separated from their parents? Allow me to say that uh, there are several patients who were under the care of Anka and those who were separated from their family and that they lived in a detention center or lived in the uh, children's unit. And they were doctrinated with an ideology which should not be at all used for the children. They were told that they did not belong to the parents, but they indeed belong to, to Anka. And that for that reason, they should obey Anka at all times. And some of them even reported to Anka about their parents. And that's uh, what we call Anka brainwashed uh, those uh, children. President, thank you, Mr. Expert and the lead co lawyer for civil parties. We will uh, take 15 minutes break and return at 5 past 3. Court officer, could you assist the experts during the break? and have him return to the courtroom at 5 past 3.